So I first came across the resource list probably about a year or so ago when the university was introducing this as the new way of supplying reading lists basically. Um, attended the training session, found out a bit more about it, seemed quite an interesting way of doing it and it built up from there. So resource list supports teaching and learning because it allows me to make available to students a whole range of resources. It's not just the typical books and articles, but um, a wider range of websites and other online resources like videos, um, web forums with debates, which you know previously wouldn't necessarily have been available on paper-based reading lists. It's actually a really good way of getting students to engage with the materials. Um, I think one of my modules is one of the highest um, in terms of access by students to the reading materials because they're able to find it quite easily electronically. You can find it easily through the library as well then. Um, but it also allows you to, and I find this perhaps the better aspect for it, that you can break it down by lecture, but also you can structure it so that you have subgroups within lectures as well. And sometimes when I'm linking second year material with first year material, I can embed some literature from the first year in a separate section as a reminder for those who want to go back over first year literature to save them having to dig around for their reading lists from previous years. To introduce students to resource lists, the main way was really just um, using those first lectures as the general introduction to the module and actually get the resource list up on the website and talk them through how, the, how it was set out, why it was set out that way, um, how to use the links, how to then find the things in the library, how the links to the electronic books work, how the links to articles work. So just going through it all basically and showing them um, step by step. So you can also click the online resource button, um, which will take you to any web pages or in the case of this one, a journal article with one click and it takes you to the web page which has the journal article there for you to read or to download the PDF if that's what you'd prefer. So the use of statistics are quite helpful for thinking about what material students are accessing, um, looking to see where they focus mainly their reading, where they potentially haven't accessed some particularly useful resources and nudging them back in that particular direction. I think also the use of statistics will be beneficial for thinking about what things I might want to digitise in the future. The digital request feature has been a huge benefit for me because I used to, for some of my teaching, particularly first year teaching, have to go and you know scan all the documents myself and make them available to students. Now I can just, in a few clicks, I've said exactly which chapter of a book or which um, article I want digitised and actually today I've been receiving emails saying that successfully those applications have now been digitised and available to my students. The ability to edit the list at any stage is incredibly useful because throughout the year when I do find new readings or new journals are published with new articles in, I can just add them straight away with the bookmark button without any hassle and that's ready for next year as well then. So it's not a case of just having to send out an announcement to students saying, hey guys, this is now available, I think you should read it. And then remembering to add it for next year, by adding it now, it's ready to go forever, basically.